Hello and welcome back to the channel where we continue our odyssey into hacking IKEA furniture. We began with uh, creating a wall of curtains to create a grand theatrical appearance um, for parties and gatherings. Today the hacks continue as we work with the Calex pieces of furniture and we're going to take those, we're going to update them, we're going to make them into a single piece of furniture. Big shout out for this design to Amy from Soft Landing Studios and the Soft Landing Podcast, working with my beautiful, talented, amazing wife, Angela, on these designs, and they came out great, and I'm gonna do my best to see if we can't bring these to life. We'll be able to eat there, create videos there. We're gonna use it for display, storage. It's gonna have multifunction use for our family who are all now creating videos on YouTube. Myself, wife, son and daughter all have channels go check them out their channels are listed in the description and it's a whole lot of fun at our house right now so without further ado let's go on to hack this calyx okay so we're out doing some chores uh getting some paint some other things that we're going to need for the project and we had some donations to drop off at our local thrift store and i thought well what the heck we'll go in there tool around see if they have any ikea things that we can use and lo and behold as we pulled up outside there it is yes yeah mm -hmm. nice one of the main pieces that we're looking for. Um, we got a hold of the furniture guy. 25 bucks. 25 bucks? Yeah. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Yeah. I'll over there Perfect. Thank you. He priced it out really quick for us, and for 25 bucks, we're taking it home. Yeah, there she is. <laughs> we're going to do this here. All right. The first order of business is to get the sticker off and get this thing cleaned up so that we can get it painted. IKEA furniture has a smooth surface to it, so in order to keep from sanding it, in order to prep it out for paint, we're using a primer that adheres to these smooth surfaces. We're using the Zinsser brand bin primer, which is shellac based, and I'm no stranger to Zinsser. I've used their actual shellac on vintage travel trailer restorations. You can check some of those videos out on the channel as well. I'm really happy with how this turned out, and now it's time to paint. We decided on black, and a matte finish is what we wanted to go with, so we decided to use chalkboard paint, in this case, the Krylon brand. Okay, so one of the challenges with applying chalkboard paint, it goes on very thin, uh, you can see all the brush marks. I've come up with a different method, and that is not only using the brush, but we're gonna use a roller as well. The roller applies a thicker coat of paint. That gets the coverage on there. And then once you do that, you get it all over your face. That, that's the next step, get it all over your face. Then use the brush as it was intended. And voila, nice and smooth. Now, if you'll excuse me, I gotta go wash up. 
So we're now at a very exciting portion of the project. The wall is painted, the curtains are up, the valance is up. Everybody loves it, it looks amazing. We're very excited about it. That was a huge thing to do. Um, the paper is still down and we are just sort of mocking up the space uh, and getting the feel of how it's actually gonna function. And it is time to finish off the other Ikea hacks. The calyx is what we're working with. We've repainted them in black. That's just a quick peek. We're also got the TV back up, consoles in place, kitties in place. And uh, we're just sort of mocking this up before we pull the paper and get it all done. So today I'm gonna be making the tabletops. We are going to make some plywood countertops and put contact paper on them that look like marble. We have a lot of marble top with brass table. And so Angela found some marble contact paper to offset the black, but it also has gold streaks in it. So this should be really interesting. Now it's time to measure and cut the tabletop, getting the contact paper on them. And it is very exciting because we're in the home stretch. So without further ado, let's get on it. Another thing that we're going to do to both figuratively and literally elevate this furniture is to put feet on it. So I've attached the brackets to this piece of wood so that they can be easily painted and they have been painted black and it is time to start assembling. The first step is removing the brackets from the wood where I had secured them in order to paint the feet and placing them on the IKEA furniture in a way that the feet will not protrude out from the edges and they're kind of not concealed but tucked underneath. After screwing on the feet, I hammered in some plastic protectors and added some thick felt pads to protect the floor. And then repeating the process one more time on the longer section. securely in place, it's now time to flip these over and get this project back on its feet again. So it's time now to tie all of the IKEA pieces together into one brand new piece of furniture and this is what we're going to do it with. Got three quarter inch plywood here and so we're going to cut that into a top, screw that all together, get the feet on it. After that then we'll move on to the contact paper. That's funny. It is funny. Get on camera. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Okay, so I got the tabletop cut. Everything's fine. <laughs> but in a total amateur hour move, I thought I had the sawhorse on the outside of the tabletop, and I didn't, so... <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Good as new. <laughs> the 
top in place, it's time for the final bit, and that is the contact paper. Now, I wanted to have a nice 45 degree angle, and the paper itself wasn't as wide as the top itself, so I needed to kind of draw the lines on there and figure out how I wanted to cut it. Now, if you've never worked with contact paper, which I haven't, you'll find that it sticks when you don't want it to, and sometimes it doesn't stick when you need it to. So this took a lot of trial and error and even more patience to get it to where I finally needed it to be. And you do have to make sure that the surface that you're putting the contact paper onto is clean because when the light shines off of it, it will show everything. Little particles, uh, even a hair showed up and I had this happen to me. Once I had everything in place and it was complete, I had to actually pull up one of the main pieces because of a hair that was in there and it just was bothering me so much. But stick with it. This came out amazing and you can do it too.